What's going on everybody, C4 here, and today we are continuing with our 32 Team 7 round mock draft series. And this is the final episode. We're going to the team without a first round pick, without a second round pick as of the 26th of March. And that is the Houston Texans, whose first pick comes at 68 in the third round. Now the Houston Texans looking to have a massive rebound, I think in terms of turnaround, because they were so decimated with injuries last year. Uh, if, if everything's good with Deshaun Watson, they could be... In terms of where they finish from a year before to where they get to now, the closest team that can replicate what the Eagles were able to do. But before we jump into the mock draft, you look at what they did via free agency and how that shaped things up. Looking at their loss, they only had one real notable loss, and it was a retirement of CJ Fedorowicz, who uh, was uh, actually looking like a little bit of an emerging tight end. Uh, offered good versatility, could run block, uh, big body, but more so was was really developing as a passer, and it was literally unfortunate that he had some concussion issues. That definitely sucks. You don't want to see any guy go out like that, especially a guy that was, that was developing into a playmaker for that Texas offense. Look at what they brought in. They brought in Aaron Colvin, who's a very proven nickel corner. Definitely got an upgrade there. Uh, Jonathan Joseph was able to re-sign, so you get a good veteran presence. Still can give you valuable starting minutes. They brought in Senio Kilamente from the Saints. He was actually pretty serviceable as a starter. Will be assumed starter here. For the Texans, which they definitely need to get better on the offensive line. I think that was probably the number one area they want to improve upon. Uh, they brought in Zach Fulton, who also started the offensive line. Gives you some versatility at playing guard, at playing center. So I think that he's probably going to be a starter there. I think the interior will be Fulton, Nick Martin, and Kilamante. Uh, and then they brought in, in probably what is the best value pick of free agency, I think. Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew on a one year. I think it was $7 million, which is simply ridiculous. Uh, he will come in. Like I said, they probably... In my opinion, they clearly brought in Colvin to play in the nickel, which is where Honey Badger could play. So I think you're just going to view him as a stronger free safety. I don't know what they're going to have him play yet. I would guess strong safety, but it could be free. Either or, Honey Badger is really one of the most dynamic defensive backs in football. Still really confused as to why the Cardinals just wouldn't pay him when they specially paid a bunch of trash QBs. An outrageous amount of money. Uh, but what their loss is a Texans gain and a defense that already had one of the most terrifying front sevens in football. Just got better on the back end. Ugh, I think they're going to be a problem next year if they can stay healthy. So with that being said, now it's time to jump into the mock draft where they have a bunch. They have a decent amount of picks, just no first and second round. Just so they did a good job acquiring more uh, potential assets here. So first off in the third round of pick 68, I was selecting offensive tackle Will Richardson from NC State. When you look at Will Richardson, he's probably one of the best of like the second tier offensive tackles. You know, he's grouped in there with the likes of maybe Tyrell Crosby, maybe maybe Chukwuma Akorafor. Those guys could be available here for the Texans in the third round. But Will Richardson is a guy that I, a lot of scouts are comparing him to be a potential left tackle in the NFL earlier on in his career. Now, I know the Texans, ideally, you know, you're not going to get a whole lot of starters here when you don't have a first or second round pick as a rookie. But I think long term, they need to get better at the tackle spot. They have Julian Davenport, who was a fourth round pick last year, was regarded as one of the top uh, projects. You have Derek Newton, who pretty much blew up his knees. I don't know where he's at. You brought in Central Henderson, who has a little bit of upside, but not a whole lot of starting experience from the Bills. So I think adding a guy like Will Richardson, I would not be surprised if at the end of the day, he ends up as a starter for the Texans as a rookie. There's no way that they're going to have a good offensive line, but all you got to do is just give Deshaun Watson a little bit of time. Their offensive line, they've already shown at least a more initiative than the Seattle Seahawks have done, trying to help Russell Wilson out with their O-line. And I think a guy like Will Richardson long-term is a good fit. Short-term might work out as a rookie. Going to their next third-round pick at pick 80. Utter value pick. I was very surprised he was still available here, and I don't think they would pass on him. I have wide receiver Anthony Miller from Memphis. I think he could be a starting slot wide receiver. It would be a phenomenal, phenomenal compliment to DeAndre Hopkins and Will Fuller, who Hopkins is kind of the do-it-all uh, low-key superstar. If there's ever such a thing as a low-key superstar player in the NFL, it is DeAndre Hopkins. Will Fuller is one of the best deep threats. So get a guy like Anthony Miller, who, in my opinion, could eventually be the best wide receiver in this draft class, who is still somehow there in the third round. Again, sometimes mock drafts are stupid. Um, I think, you know, Braxton Miller hasn't really developed that much for being a uh, 2016 third-round pick. I think Anthony Miller can walk in day one and be one of the better starting slot wide receivers in football. Bold claim, especially those weapons with Deshaun Watson. That's pretty damn scary, man. Uh, moving to the... Uh, well, also, Anthony Miller didn't test particularly well. I think a lot of people thought he might run faster, which I think could potentially hurt his draft stock a little bit for teams that think, hey, you know what? He can be an outside wide receiver for sure. And I definitely think he has the upside to be an outside wide receiver. Uh, that's pretty much what he did at Memphis. He was electrifying. But I think so far, like earlier on in his career, he might get pigeonholed into a slot role. And that's fine. That's exactly what the Texans would do and use him. 
All right, moving on to the last third round pick, pick 98. That's lightning defensive end Chad Thomas from Miami. Really good. I know I heard he's a big time musician, but ultimately, I think you add some competition to that right defensive end spot. I think DJ Reader's got the nose tackle spot on lock. Obviously, you got JJ Watt at defensive end. You got my boy Carlos Watkins kind of rotating in. But then you have, like, according to Arlats.com, Joel Heath is starting at defensive end. You have Christian Covington, my Canadian brother, in, uh, also has depth. I think a guy like Chad Thomas, great offside, great athlete could contribute right away as a rotation on the defensive end front and I just want to see all those names outside of maybe Watkins I don't see any of those guys that could emerge as an eventual every down starter like a clear starter opposed JJ Watt but I think Chad Thomas definitely has that ceiling one of the higher ceilings for a 3-4 end in this year's draft class and I think when you're Texans getting someone that's going to give you valuable minutes as a rookie on the defense here in the third round is a very safe and wise investment going to the fourth round pick 103 I was selecting cornerback Holton Hill from Texas. Big, long, rangy corner. One of the better tackling corners in the draft class, but does come with some off-the-field issues. I think if he didn't have the off-the-field, he might have been a, a early day two pick just from the upside, just from this frame that he's carrying. But because of the off-field, usually fourth round is where these guys start to go. I think in the Houston, Texas, when you look at the cornerbacks, you know, Jonathan Joseph's kind of on, a, you know, one-year deal coming back in fourth. Kareem Jackson's not getting any younger. You have Colvin as a nickel. You have Kevin Johnson, a 2015 first-round pick, who the first, talking like Mike Tyson, first-round pick, who's been, you know, yeah, he's been a guy. He's not been terrible, not been great. Definitely hasn't lived up to the first-round billings. Definitely not enough to, that we've seen to give up on him. But I think ultimately getting a guy like Colton Hill could very well be best player available. Good value pick here in the fourth round. Uh, let's him out the field, but, you know, he's not going to be, you know, pressed in the limelight. He can just quietly make the roster and battle and work his way up to the depth chart, which I think would be best case scenario here for the Houston Texans. Going to the sixth round where they have three picks. First up at 177 out of the second, defensive back Siren Neal from Jacksonville State. Looking at the roster, I think he'd come in and be free safety too. Uh, maybe even compete with Andre Howe for some snaps. He's a great athlete. Six feet tall, 210 pounds, and a 4'5", 6'40", 70 on the bench rest. 40 and a half inch vertical jump. Um... You know, just just everything that you need. Plus, he's, you know, he's a DB. Can give you a little bit of corner. NFL ProCom gave him Eric Rowe, who at one point in time I was huge on. And so pumped that my Philadelphia Eagles drafted him. Um, and, you know, he's a little bit of a value pick. NFL.com has him going between rounds four and five. Uh, when you look at what you get with Neil, he's more so a guy that can play at the line of scrimmage. Uh, not so much, you know, a guy that's a ball hawk or something like that. So he could be actually maybe even seen as a strong safety from that uh, standpoint. But ultimately, I think with his traits... And the value here at defensive back, just because there's not a whole lot of depth at safety beyond Honey Badger. Uh, it's a nice little investment here for the Texans. Going to the second, sixth round pick, 211. I am taking a tight end, Will Disley from Washington. Uh, I think he comes in, can compete for tight end one spot with Ryan Griffin, but I think that he got that stuff on lock. But he's more of a blocking guy. Started as an offensive lineman, I believe. His other offensive or defensive lineman, I think it's offensive lineman. Then made the conversion to tight end. Uh, a lot of scouts, I, have, I think Mike Mayock originally had him in his top five tight end. So that is really good value here in the sixth round for a team that just, obviously when you lose C.J. Fedorowicz, it's going to kind of sting and you need to replace that on the depth chart. But I think a guy like Will Disley can give you some run blocking immediately as a rookie, which is good little tandem there with Griffin, who will be your receiver. The guy that you know, hopefully can develop as a little bit of a safety net here for Deshaun Watson, even though, I mean, clearly DeAndre Hopkins is a safety net. Uh, so that's a, that's a nice little value pick, filling out a spot that doesn't have a whole lot of depth on the Texans depth chart. Going to the last sixth round pick, 214. I was selecting offensive tackle Zach Crabtree from Oklahoma State. Uh, a lot of scouts are really high on him. Great size, 6'7", 310, good length. Uh, NFL.com currently has him at a fifth round pick. I'm not going to lie, I don't know a whole lot about him, but I do know he is a run t first type guy, which means he's going to be pitching hold in at the right tackle spot. And when you look at the right tackles on the Houston Texans, after Derek Newton, which there is uncertainty there, plus he is kind of old, uh, maybe planning for a future beyond that. Could be ideal. I mean, Julian Davenport, Henderson, both those guys have the length that, I mean, prototypical, historical right tackles have. You could swing them there, but I think for just value for a team that I think the Texans do need to add more depth on the offensive line, a guy like Zach Crabtree in the fifth round is a worthy flyer because he could very well end up cracking the final 53. And then to finish off the draft here in the seventh round, pick 222, either taking cornerback Demontre Wade from Murray State. Looking at what he did in the combine, tested out decent. Uh, a lot of scouts are hiring him. Uh, NFL.com had him as a like fourth, fifth round pick. Didn't test particularly what the combine, but he's more, you know, aggressive type corner. 5'11", 206, ran a 4'5", 7'40". Uh, not going to, you know, not going to wow you with his uh, speed combination, but, you know, he's he's good enough for bump and run man coverage. And I think that ultimately just good value depth to make the special teams just a little bit better. And we look at the back end corners on the roster. Bryce Jones, D. Virgin. Who are these guys? Josh Thornton, who? Tristan Deku. Oh, special teamer? 
So get you getting some special teams help for a guy that's, you know, an aggressive type corner. Those are the guys that usually find their way at the bottom end of the roster that can contribute on special teams. I think you get some nice value there into Montre Wade. But, I mean, like I said, guys, ultimately it's not going to be super pretty when the Texans don't have a lot of big-time picks to invest. But I think especially the first four, Hill, Chad Thomas, Miller, Will Richardson, that would be as happy as I think you could imagine a Texan fan would be coming out of the draft. So there you go, guys. That is the final seven-round mock draft of this series. I hope you guys have enjoyed round two. We did it last year. We started it last year. And uh, what we're still going to do before the draft, draft's still a couple days away, I'm going to give you my final first-round mock draft, which is going to be, like I said, a lot of changed. I've been recording this for over a month. Uh, trades have happened, stuff like that. I'm going to give you one mock draft, which is going to be the mock draft that I'm kind of going to stand up there with. Like, this is going to be my predictions. I want to see how many I can get right. And there'll probably be one more Philadelphia Eagles one, which is just, you know, in my own bubble, so I don't have to worry about the other 32 teams. Because like I said, the way to explain it is, like, for the Eagles, for example, Simi Cobb. Simi Cobb is graded between a third and fifth round. I'm a big fan of him. Uh, if I'm in the Eagles, hypothetically, he could be there in the fourth or fifth round. But because I really like him in my mock draft, I... Had him going in the third round to a team that needed wide receiver. Whereas if I'm just making an Eagles mock draft, I could probably get away with saying he might go in the fourth or fifth because that's where he might go. So that's why the, the last little Eagles mock draft could be a little bit different. Um, but today was the Texans. So if you're a Texan fan, if you agree to screen any picks you saw here today, let me know in the comment section below. If you have your own Texans mock draft, feel free to post it in the comments. We do a nice little side by side. If it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching this series. Draft season is still well underway. Uh, we're going to have uh, your know, reaction videos all draft night uh, for the first round. So if, you, if, you, if you're afraid of video spam, it's going to happen. I made... You know, it's a business decision to do that. Last year was good business to do that. But I did it for the second round as well. What I think I'm going to do this year is I'm going to live stream the second round, day two, as much as I can. And we can talk about picks and stuff like that. It helps when Philly, unless they trade back, doesn't have a second or third round pick. So I can just talk with you guys about your guys' football teams. So it will be a good time. I'll post on Twitter at PapaXC4 with updates on that. Thank you guys for watching. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out.